This module will discuss asterisk versioning. We'll briefly look at the history of asterisk releases and then explain how current and future releases are planned, numbered, and scheduled. After that, we'll suggest some best practices related to upgrading your asterisk version. The very first open source version of asterisk was announced in December of 1999. It took a few years for the project to gather inertia and contributors, but by 2004, the 1.0 release was announced. Major versions 1.2 and 1.4 followed in 2005 and 2006. For the 1.6 release family, there were three major releases in 2008 and 2009. Asterisk 1.8 was released in 2010. At this time, all major releases of Asterisk except 1.4, 1.6.2, and 1.8 families are considered end of life. If you're currently running a version of Asterisk that predates one of these families, we urge you to consider upgrading immediately. Let's take a closer look at asterisk version numbering. Details about asterisk can be inferred from the version number for releases in 1.8 series and beyond. To date, all product releases of asterisk have had a 1 as the major number. The first number is considered the concept number and is unlikely to be incremented unless large portions of asterisk are completely overhauled. The next number is the feature number. This started at 0 and has increased by 2 with each major update in the feature set offered with asterisk. The third part of the version number is the minor number. This is incremented whenever a new version in the same release family is published. These releases are normally made to provide fixes to identified bugs. Some releases also have a fourth number known as the patch level. This is added when one or more small but important changes are made prior to release. Usually these are security updates. Modern asterisk release series come in two types. Both types are feature frozen, which means that only bug fixes and security updates will be applied to that series. The introduction of significant new features requires a new release series. While this sometimes means that the very latest features aren't immediately available in a production release series, it ensures that each series is consistent and supportable. The two types of asterisk releases are standard and long-term support or LTS releases. Standard releases are maintained for one year from their release date. This means that an effort will be made to correct identified bugs in a given standard release for a period of one year. Additionally, a standard release will be covered with security fixes for two years from the release date. Long-term support releases will be maintained for four years from their release date with security fixes for a total of five years from the release date. Asterisk 1.6.2 is a standard release, and Asterisk 1.8 is a long-term support release. View the Asterisk versions page on the Asterisk wiki for more information. A link is found on the Attachments tab. This is the first of several times throughout this course that we will suggest a best practice approach to using Asterisk. Some of these may be obvious, but we'll say them anyway. We recommend that you always run an asterisk release that is under current maintenance. It doesn't always have to be a long-term support release, but if you're using a standard release, you should expect to upgrade within the next two years. If you happen to encounter a significant bug in a release that is no longer maintained, you'll have no choice but to upgrade to fix it. And if you're not regularly updating asterisk already, you're unlikely to be prepared for an emergency upgrade to a new major release. You should also subscribe to the asterisk security mailing list. While every effort is made to keep Asterisk stable and secure, occasionally security vulnerabilities are discovered. Digium has a good track record of rapidly offering fixes to security issues in Asterisk, but you can't take advantage of the new releases that correct security issues if you don't know about them. The URL to subscribe to the Asterisk security mailing list is available in the Attachments tab. When a security issue is identified, an advisory is issued and posted to this list. It describes the vulnerability in detail, including susceptibility, severity, and whether there are known exploits. Of course, affected versions and corrected versions are also listed in each advisory. Finally, we recommend that you thoroughly plan how and when you'll conduct upgrades to Asterisk. There are several files included in each version of Asterisk that can help you understand what you need to know to prepare for a smooth upgrade. Review the files named Changes, Change Log, upgrade.txt, upgrade-version number, and all of the files starting with README in the version you're upgrading to. You should also consider installing the new version in a test environment where you can verify that your configuration and dial plan function as expected. 
Even though it's theoretically possible to have only a few seconds of downtime as the old Astra's version is stopped and the new one is started, you should plan the cutover when the system is least heavily loaded. Throughout this course, we'll mention several other software packages provided by Digium for use with Asterisk. Some of these use the same numbering system that Asterisk does, and the package release family must match that of the Asterisk version with which it's being used. Others use independent version numbers and won't have matching numbers. Code that plugs directly into Asterisk as an internal module will require that the version numbers match. Examples of this are codec G729, Fax for asterisk, and Skype for asterisk. Code that is a separate package that does not plug directly into asterisk is more likely to have its own version numbers. Examples are DOTI, libpri, libss7, and the asterisk GUI. Note that the asterisk add-ons collection of code was a separate package prior to the 1.8 release series, but now is natively included in asterisk. At this point, you should understand how asterisk version numbers are defined and what they mean. You've also seen some of the asterisk release history, and you know that asterisk 1.8 is the current release family and is what you should probably be running. In case you're not already running it, the best practices offered in this module might help you through the upgrade process. We'll now move on to look at several of the ways asterisk is commonly used in a module dedicated to asterisk use cases.